In today's video, we're overclocking the AMD Ryzen 3 5300GE processor. That's a 35 watt APU up to 4,628 MHz, and it's integrated graphics up to 2,450 MHz. We do this using the Gigabyte B550 Aorus motherboard. I'll speed run you through the BIOS settings and provide some notes and tips along the way. Please note that this is not the whole story on how to overclock this system. Please don't outright copy these settings and apply them to your system. If you want to learn how to overclock this kind of a platform, please have a look at the longer Scatterbencher video. All right, let's do this. When you've entered the BIOS, in easy mode, set XMP disabled to XMP Profile 1. This enables the use of the Intel Extreme Memory Profile 2.0 technology and will make the DDR4 memory run at its rated speed of DDR4 4266 with cast latency 19 and 1.40 volts. Enter Advanced Mode. Set CPU clock control to 104. This changes the platform reference clock. In most overclocking scenarios, you never have to overclock the reference clock as there are plenty of multiplier ratios available to push your cores, graphics or memory to the max. However, when supercharging Precision Boost Overdrive, we exploit the fact that the Precision Boost algorithm is unaware of the reference clock to achieve even higher frequencies. Increasing the reference clock frequency impacts a lot of parts inside the CPU, so we'll need to adjust other settings accordingly to ensure stability. This is also the reason why we use a SATA drive connected to the Asmedia chipset as opposed to an NVMe drive connected to the CPU directly. Set GFX clock frequency to 2350. This increases the frequency of the integrated graphics. Note that the actual frequency is 2444 MHz. That's 2350 times 1.04, as we have adjusted the reference clock frequency from 100 MHz to 104 MHz. Set GFX core voltage to 1.425. This increases the voltage for the SOC as well as the graphics core. Note that this is only 25 millivolts higher than the automatic voltage boost we get when enabling PBO. Set system memory multiplier to 42.66. This ensures that the memory is running at a stable near XMP frequency despite increasing the reference clock frequency from 100 MHz to 104 MHz. Set F clock frequency to 2133. This ensures that we are operating the Infinity Fabric and Memory Controller in synchronous mode. Set CPU vCore to normal. This preserves the control of precision boost over the voltage. Set dynamic vCore, DVID, to plus 0.03125. This offsets the entire CPU voltage frequency curve up by 31.25 millivolt. Set DRAM voltage to 1.5. This is 100 millivolt higher than our XMP specification and ensures memory stability at the higher frequency. Go to the settings menu. Enter the AMD overclocking submenu. Here's where we will do most of the grunt work by tuning precision boost overdrive. Set precision boost overdrive to advanced and set PBO limits to manual. Set PPT limit to 150, TDC limit to 60, EDC limit to 85, SOC TDC limit to 60 and SOC EDC limit to 85. This increases the power, thermal and current ceiling of our CPU cores and SOC. Set Precision Boost Overdrive Scaler to Manual and 10x. This tricks the Precision Boost algorithm into thinking our APU is much better than it actually is, so it will push for higher voltages. Enter the Curve Optimizer submenu and set Curve Optimizer to Per Core. Here's where the real magic happens as Curve Optimizer allows us to adjust the VF curve for each CPU core by up to 30 steps of 3 to 5 millivolt. Setting a negative curve means the CPU will use less voltage for a given frequency. That in turn results in lower power, thermal and current. This in turn gives more headroom for setting higher voltage and that, well that gives us higher frequencies. I tested each core individually to find what's the best curve optimizer setting. Set core 0 to core 4 curve optimizer sign to negative. Set core 0 and core 2 curve optimizer magnitude to 5. Set core 1 and core 4 curve optimizer magnitude to 10. Leave the curve optimizer submenu. Set max CPU boost clock override to 200 MHz. 
This increases the CPU core frequency ceiling by 200 MHz over the pre-programmed maximum 1T limit. On the 5300GE, that's 4250 MHz even though the listed maximum boost frequency is 4200 MHz. Adding 200 MHz results in a ceiling of 4450 MHz. But since we also increased the reference clock frequency from 100 MHz to 104 MHz, the actual ceiling is 4628 MHz. Then save and exit the BIOS. To make sure everything is working as intended, we rerun some benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to the default settings. Higher is better and all of our benchmark results are higher. We get the highest performance increase of plus 67% in Furmark 1080p. When running Prime95, small FFTs with AVX disabled and Furmark concurrently, the average CPU cores run stably at 4432MHz with 1.409V. The GPU operates at an average frequency of 2444MHz with 1.38V. The average CPU temperature is 68.7 degrees Celsius, the water temperature is 28.5 degrees Celsius, and the average CPU package power is 125 Watt. The highest core clock reported in the operating system is 4628 MHz, the highest GPU frequency is 2444 MHz. And that's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.